pozdrav drugari, dobrodošli na kanalu Sloboda Amazone Balkan, kao što znate moje ime je Rade, u današnjem gostovanju imamo jedno veliko ime iz svita Amazon biznisa, naime radi se o osnivaču i pronalazaču naravno softvera Jungle Scout. Jungle Scout kompanije, treba osnovim da ste svi čuli za nju, naravno govorit ćemo svakako više o njihovom softveru u narednim tutorialima, ali danas imamo naravno samog osnivača koji će nam pokazati na koji način grev zapravo pronalazi profitabilne proizvode, te neke osnovne kriterijume naravno za početnike koje on koristi kako bi naravno pronašao sebi profitabilnom proizvod na Amazonu. Pa, da krenem. Hi Greg, how are you? Welcome to my channel. I'm really happy to have you here and also, I'm sure, also my audience. We would like to know something more about you, if you can tell us something about your beginning on Amazon and also something more about Jungle Scout and the new features what you have. Brad, thank you very much for having me on. I'm excited to talk about this. This is my favorite topic, something that I'm really passionate about. I, um, you know, back in uh, 2012 and 13, I had a real job. I went to school to be a civil engineer and I worked as that. And I didn't like it. I wanted to become an entrepreneur. And the way that I was able to make that happen was through selling physical products on Amazon. And what I clicked, quickly learned were some of my products were doing well and some of them weren't. And really what it came down to is which products had existing demand on Amazon, what the level of competition were, you know, what the profit margins were. And me being like a very data-driven type person, the engineer, you know, by education, I wanted to create a better way to systematically and use the data to find what products were good to sell on Amazon. That's ultimately how Jungle Scout was born. So um, yeah, that's a little bit of my story. Then ever, I've been selling on Amazon ever since then. I still sell on Amazon today. I spend most of my time working on Jungle Scout, but um, I still have my Amazon business. So I can kind of stay in the know of what's working and what's not. So yeah, this is going to be fun. That's but you are now more focused on uh, on uh, software develop, uh, development. I mean, uh, about the Jungle Scout or more or uh, also yeah. about your uh, products on Amazon. What I is, think uh, I spend about 80% of my time on Jungle Scout and 20% of time on my Amazon business. Yeah, but you have also team working for you for your products to help you, like some of the guys from, the, from Jungle Scout also, from the team. Yeah, exactly. I have about um, 125 people working for me. It starts big, yeah. So it's how many how many years already Jungle Scout exists? I remember 2016 or... Uh, more than uh, 2000 yeah i launched it in january of 2015 so it's about five years old now uh this is this, this is still young company but it, how many users uh Jungle scout have now about 225,000. so it grows really fast because i remember 2016 you was all, all around 60,000. yeah Something yeah like that, that sounds about right uh, uh, I'm also data driven guy, you know, I explore so much. So I know a lot of information about you, you know, yeah. <laughs> I know that your, uh, your Amazon was really uh, profitable, profitable uh, before. So you had a really, you have, you are not of these guys as I see a lot of this kind of uh, software companies, they introduce softwares, but they don't have uh, experience in the background as a seller. So yeah. this is what makes Jungle Scout unique. To, to, to someone who have really experience to, to speak about them. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. About it. yeah. <laughs> Everyone yeah. needs to agree, you know, because when you check your channel and how many subscribers, uh, subscribers you have, it's, <laughs> it's uh, three times more than anyone else. <laughs> <laughs> it's about, also about data driven. Eh? Data tells the best, you know. <laughs> It does. It really is. It's the best way to t make business decisions. You know, I think a lot of people uh, kind of get in a little bit of a, a trap or a problem, kind of just following what their guts tells them or kind of what they think, but really like follow the, um, data. yeah, follow the data, tell, do what the data is telling you. It's the best way to go. It's like a finding a product, you know, and there's some people tells me I have a great idea to start a business, but I don't, I'm not so sure. I think it will change the world, you know, but I say, let's ask Amazon, run the Jungle Scout and see opportunity scores, see the competitions, <laughs> see so many things. Don't think, don't do what you think. Uh, you see, ask the, the data from Amazon, it is the best uh, teacher. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly right. So you will help us also today to find um, a profitable product on maybe someone, because a lot of people who are watching this are totally beginners here. 
So I want you as a, for total beginner to, to, to show us how the Amazon is working. I mean, Jungle Scout. And also you can, you can introduce us uh, new features, what you have. I know that you have a lot of interesting features in, in a web app. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I'd be happy to do that. So, um, yeah, we'll go ahead and dive right into it then. Sure. So, just big picture, just, you know, if you're just starting out, you're looking to launch that first product, something that's good to talk about just to start is that there is, um, you want to look for products on Amazon that are in high demand, okay? So, they have existing demand on Amazon. The reason for that is that it is difficult to bring exposure for new products that no one knows about on Amazon. Like people go to Amazon, they type in the search bar what they're looking for, and they search for it. So if you have like a brand new product that's not yet selling on Amazon or uh, no one's searching for it on Amazon, it's very hard to make it work. So that's very important. You, of course, don't want very much competition. The ways I gauge competition are the number of reviews because that shows essentially sales history, like a mixture of sales history with sales velocity, as well as how much social proof it has. I use the quality of the listing, so the likelihood that it would convert. And then I also use, like when I search on the first page, how many similar products look just like that. If Amazon's showing me other types of products that are different than it, then that essentially means like Amazon doesn't have enough products to show that are like specific for that type of product. So those would be all ways that I gauge competition. Now, of course, you also want to make sure that your product is going to be profitable, right? High margins. That one usually takes, that takes a little bit more research to figure out. So what I do is I like to start off by finding products that are in high demand with low competition. And then after that, I go to gauge the, the level, like the, uh, the amount of margins associated with them. So with that being said, you're probably thinking like, okay, cool. That all makes sense. I get it. <laughs> but what should I sell? <laughs> and that's ultimately what Jungle Scout specializes in. That's what it's best at. And I'll, I'll go ahead and share my screen and this will make a little bit more sense. So maybe you can also tell us uh, what product uh, not to sell. <laughs> <laughs> like a fidget spinners and... Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'd be happy to do that. <laughs> Yet the protein shake. And <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you can see my screen, right, Rad? Yeah, of course. Cool. So I... um. So right now I'm inside of the, uh, the Jungle Scout web application and the product that I'm looking at right now is called, or the feature I'm looking at right now is called the product database. And what we've done with this is we've kind of rebuilt Amazon's catalog in a way that we can easily search through it. And I search through Amazon's catalog in a few different ways to find good opportunities. So everyone to start off, everyone always asks me like, what category should I sell in? I, there's no category out there that's like significantly better than the rest. The only ones that I stay away from are like the media items. And then I typically don't sell things like uh, watches or jewelry or some of those items, but you can sell some if you want. So we'll go ahead and just, uh, we'll select all, but then we'll re remove like the media items and Let's see, watches, video games, movies, music. All right, so I have a few, I have a few uh, categories selected. And then over here, you can filter these however you want. So I recommend you don't sell items less than, let's say, like $18 or $20. And the reason then for that is like Amazon's lowest amount of pick, pack, and ship fees is around $5. So if you're selling items for like $10, $12, it's just hard to make more than like $1 off them. Whereas once you get up to like 15, 18, 20, then you can at least start making three, four, five, six dollars on a sale. And that obviously just adds up faster. All right. Okay. So I did minimum price, minimum sales. Let's start off by just saying like 300 units per month. Um, so if I were to hit, or I'll go ahead and do this right now. When I hit filter right now, this is showing me all the products in Amazon's catalog that sell, that are at least $18 and sell 300 units per month or more. Okay. So I know they're at a good price point. There's solid demand, but I haven't seen anything yet as far as the competition's concerned. So to do that, I'm going to say only show me products that are selling well, even though they have less than, let's start with 50 reviews and have a poor quality listing. So down here, this is the LQS. The listing quality score is a, an algorithm we came up with to gauge the likelihood of a listing to convert. So a low score is bad, a high score is good, or it's more likely to convert with a high score. So I'm going to say only show me listings. Let's do under four. So now it's like, okay, these are all the products in these categories. Sell 300 units per month or more. Under 50 reviews with a bad listing. 
All right? And now the reason I'm doing this is really just to come up with product ideas because what you'll find is if you're just sitting in your office at your computer, it's actually really hard to come up with a whole bunch of product ideas. Like an example of this is, you know, this right here, this is a, a mortar and pestle and it's a uh, like a Thai style, okay? Like I would never have thought of that. Or this is, um, let's see, what is some of this stuff? A, some type of balloon. We have a certain type of like an Irish golf hat. <laughs> so you can see there's quite a few like a little bit like obscure type products, all right? So then after I have these ideas, I want to vet to make sure they're good ideas. In order to do so, what I do is I go to Amazon and I'm just gonna search for, we'll start with, oh, with mortar and pestle. And the reason I'm doing this is because this one product right here, we know sells well, even though it only has one review, um, but do mortar and pestles, is this a good opportunity as a whole? And the way that I go about finding this is I search for them and then I run the Jungle Scout extension. So the Jungle Scout extension is different than our web application. The extension installs and integrates into Google Chrome. When you click the button, it opens this up and I can start to see a whole bunch of data points on these particular products that I'm looking at here. So for this one in particular, I see that these are the sales numbers. So there's a lot of demand. Mortar and pestles sell a lot. But I also see there's a lot of reviews. And the listings are overall fairly high quality. And that's the same thing it's telling me here, that even though there's a lot of demand, the competition's also quite high. So then what I could do is, like, the other one we're looking at was a Thai mortar pestle. So I could search for it. And then I could come up with some ideas. And I could continue down this path to see if, okay, it is Thai mortar pestles, are they a good opportunity? It's like a niche, yeah? Yeah, it's like uh, narrowing down the niche. Yeah. Yep, that's exactly right. So we'll wait for this to load real quick. And then, all right, so this one is maybe a little bit less competitive, but overall it's still pretty competitive. So, you know, I came up with this product idea, but now I've realized, okay, it's probably a little bit too competitive. So essentially what I do is I just kind of go through here and I look at these different product ideas and this is one way that I find product ideas, okay? It's just looking for items that are in high demand and not very competitive. So that's kind of like method number one. But let me show you some other methods that, uh, that I use. Like that would be like the very basic. So now let me try to find products that sell well even though they're bad quality. So that means that these products are getting bad quality reviews and these would be very likely for you to be able to make improvements on, okay? Because you know people want these things because they're buying them like crazy even though they're getting bad reviews. So yeah. let's say, even show me ones that are selling even better, 500 units, even though they get 3.7 stars or less. All right, so I'm gonna say, okay, now show me all of those products that are on Amazon right now. And these would be them. And actually, I'm gonna say only show me ones with let's say 10 reviews so that we not we know there's at least enough reviews to know whether or not it's a high or low quality product. And then my goal with these, and I'll show you. So let's see, let's find something that's pretty bad. Um, let's look at these right here actually. So this is a thermal underwear. So these are clothes you, are, uh, you would either wear these to bed or underneath your other clothes. And these are selling very well, right? 3,000 units a month, which is a lot, <laughs> even though they get bad reviews. So let's read the bad reviews and see what people don't like about them. Um, very thin, thin, felt like plastic, too thin, uh, material stiff. Let's see, extra small, fabric was stiff. So essentially for this one, like if I wanted to sell these, I would, uh, or you know, if I wanted to take advantage of, the, of this opportunity, I would get these thermal underwear sets made that were much higher quality so they would get better reviews. Because, you know, if people are willing to spend, or if they're, if they're able to sell like thousands of these every month, 
even though they only have three and a half stars, it's likely that you could sell something of higher quality and take away a whole bunch of their sales. So this is another way that I go about finding product opportunities. And I actually like this one quite a bit and I do this quite often now. But let me show you some other ways too. I wanna to show you multiple different ways you'd be thinking of product ideas. Um, my new favorite tool inside Jungle Scout for finding product opportunities, the Opportunity Finder. So the product database, I'm searching through individual products to look for one that is, um, that's doing quite well. But then I still have to verify the niche as a whole. Whereas the Opportunity Finder, it's already looking at all of the top products for that niche to determine how good of a qual or how high of a quality the opportunity is. So I'll just select a few uh, categories real quick. Um, you can choose whichever ones you like to sell in. I'm gonna say, okay, only show me ones that are selling, uh, let's say like on average 500 a month or more. We'll put this at around 18 bucks. And then I'll filter these. And I'll show you what comes up here. So from here, these are like all of the, the keywords that are, these are all the opportunities or all the niches that match my criteria. And I'm actually gonna remove office real quick because I see a lot of uh, kind of like product type or like model numbers in there a little bit. So now what I'm looking at is, you know, these are the items that have a high niche score. So, you know, the, uh, the average unit sold quite high. They're at the price point that I'm looking at. The search volume's fine and the competition's low. In order to uh, determine competition, we use the factors that I talked about earlier, as in like number of reviews and the quality of the listing. And also search volume, is it your standard also to, to, to what is your standard for search volume? Do you check more than 500? Example for here, monthly search volume, it's like a 248, is it, that, is, uh, that is too low, right? Well, no. Well, typically what happens is if the products are selling well, even though they have a lower amount of search volume, typically what's happening is there people are probably finding those, that niche or that opportunity through a different keyword. And I, I can actually show you how to determine that in a okay. second. Um, but this is just another great way to come up with product ideas. So let me see here. Like a, a type of cat litter, okay? This is pretty obscure. I've never really think of this, but it sells quite well. Like 950, 400, 890. I can see what the average price has been for about the past year. So wow, cat, cat litter is more expensive than I thought. This is expensive. 20, $27 for cat litter. I can see how the search volume trends year round. So it looks like it's fairly consistent year round. And then um, the, I can also see the level of seasonality. So this is just another method that I use for coming up with product ideas. Like, uh, let's see what else is in here. Like women's lacrosse gloves, that could be a pretty good potential product opportunity. Uh, but yeah, it looks like uh, I guess they wear their lacrosse gloves in the winter time. So we're like, we're entering into that right now, yeah. but it's really easy to see that. Or let's see, tree stand safety rope. So I guess this is something like hunters wear when they're climbing up in trees to hunt, uh -huh. um, you know, like a good price point, uh, more popular in the fall and winter time, which makes sense. That's when people would uh, go hunting in the U S um, but yeah, through this method, you can come up with a lot of good product ideas. And then I usually still vet them the same way as I do uh, with the product database. I go back to Amazon, I type them in here, and I kind of look at the, uh, the product opportunity as a whole. So kind of same thing, I'll go here, you know, I'll run the Jungle Scout extension. Sometimes um, it'll be a, a great opportunity, other times not as much, but I'll show you if it's, if it looks like it could be a good opportunity, but I want something a little bit different, maybe still in the same neighborhood, I'll show you how I find that now. Okay, wow. So this is actually, an opportunity score of seven is actually quite good. Most of the things that I sell have a seven, sometimes an eight, but it's actually really, really hard to find a nine or a 10. Like seven, or sevens and eights are really good. And the reason for that is, you know, we're showing that it has a high number of monthly sales, uh, there's a few people with high reviews, but then there's even people like this person only has 19 reviews and, uh, you know, they're selling about 300 units per month, which is good. 
Um, but let me show you another way that I, so sometimes I'm like, okay, like that seemed like a pretty good opportunity. Let me see if there's anything else that's kind of similar. And sometimes what I'll do to do that is I'll go into Keyword Scout and I'll type that search term into Keyword Scout. And the reason that I do this is Keyword Scout has a very sophisticated algorithm for recommending keywords uh, based off of the keyword that you entered to seed it with. So um, Keyword Scout knows that when people search for these search terms down here, they end up purchasing this type of product, okay? So the reason that I like it is because you can find very similar niches, but not like the exact same one. So, you know, example of this is uh, a ladder stand. So this would be like a, uh, another type of tree stand probably, or even climbing harness. Like, let's try that one. Mm. So looks like there's, these are probably more so for like rock climbers, but I can go ahead and I can take a look at these. And then of course I can take a look to see how well these are selling, how competitive they are, what the listing quality score is like. Let's see here. Okay. So this one's, uh, these actually are pretty good, have pretty good demand, but it's a little bit more comp competitive than the last product we saw with the, uh, the uh, what was that thing called again? The, the safety rope for your oh, yeah. tree. So after I find some product ideas, what used to happen is I would always forget what I found and um, kind of like what I wanted to sell. So what I recommend is if you do use this, the way that I like come up with all these different ideas and then narrow them down to what's best is by using the product tracker. So I'll go in here. I will, I'm going to add a new category. So I'll add the tree stand safety rope. Here's a bunch of tree stand safety ropes and I'll create this category. And the reason that I like to do this is because after doing so, you can, it's just much easier to keep track of all these different product ideas that you've come up with. And then you can start to compare, uh, you know, like this one to this one to see which one you like better. Because with our, you can view them as they track data over time. Like, let me show you an example. It's like this one right here. This shows you how many units were sold for the past two months. So I can see how many units I've sold. And then it's also much easier to just keep track of all your different product ideas. And then on the overview tab, you can compare all the different product ideas. So that's really why I like using it because otherwise it's like, man, what was that one that I came up with again? And I start to forget. How so many products you can track with the, with the basic web app? Um, right now you can do 150, but I think we're actually getting ready to increase that a little bit so people can track some more. <laughs> yeah. I think that they, they, they will not follow more than 50, you know, because... <laughs> yeah. I'm not so sure that they, they will follow at the beginning more than 50, you know. It's, uh, mm. it's too, mu uh, too much da uh, data for them, you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I know what you mean. But, um, yeah, that's essentially how I go about doing my product research. You know, I'm looking inside of the product database. My favorite filters in there are essentially high demand, low competition, or high demand with products that need to uh, uh, that need improvements, or sometimes I'll just do high demand with a very very bad listing, so like a listing quality score of one or two. So that's how I like to use the product database. I then also like to use the opportunity finder, and I just adjust different filters and different categories and start looking through those first few pages of results. And those are changing quite often because it's pulling in new opportunities every day. So. Sometimes you'll find stuff that, you know, hasn't been popular very long, but it's like kind of on an uphill trend. Sometimes it's hard to gauge whether or not that's going to be like a fidget spinner, like you talked about earlier, or maybe a long, longer lasting trend, but oftentimes those can be very low competition. Um, and yeah, that's essentially how I go about doing it. That's how I find all the products that I have for sale. Uh, you know, realistically, it's probably going to, you know, uh, you know, I probably, I probably do like a few hours of product research 
before I choose kind of like what product I want or what product's my favorite. So expect, expect to spend a little bit of time searching through there. But yeah, that's essentially how it works. Yeah, I have a few questions from one of the followers on the group. So I will ask you okay. just a moment. Maybe it's good for them to answer. Okay, so uh, Nikolic Milos, he said, he said, hi, Greg, uh, what do you think about uh, seven demand and medium competition product for someone who is still don't sell on Amazon for beginners? So seven demand and medium competition, is it uh, worth of uh, trying? Yeah, I actually just, uh, you know, spoke about that uh, a few minutes ago that really like the opportunities in the extension that are a seven or an eight, those are really good opportunities. It's like, it's pretty much impossible to find nines or tens. We probably should adjust our algorithm a little bit. <laughs> like right now, it's really good to find sevens uh, and eights are very good. You know, for, for someone who have a, a bigger bu budget, he can also try with four and five. If yeah. You know how to do it, especially with the giveaways, you know. Because mm. I always say to people, you they ask me, uh, what is the budget for beginner, you know. I said, if you find a product, what you see opportunity score is eight, you need to see a uh, uh, suggestion from uh, Jungle Scout about the giveaways. Because if you don't have a budget for the giveaways, you know, it's hard to, to, to have a successful launch of the product without a proper, to, you know, giveaway. Right. So it's, yep, I agree. That's what, what, what people don't, uh, don't count about the extra money for giveaway, you know. They right. count about the, the, the product price and the shipment and everything, but forget the giveaway, yeah. Mm. Okay, so Stratton is asking also, what is the easiest way of finding a supplier uh, using GS supplier uh, database? Because when I search by supplier or company name, I get tons of results. And when I search by ASIN, often no supplier can be found. Yeah, that's a really good question. So um, with the ASIN match only works about, I'd say like one out of three times for me. And that's because what it's trying to do is it has to take the ASIN, it finds the brand, and then it's trying to match the brand with the legal company that owns that brand. So to do that, we search through government records, we search through uh, what they use to register their uh, legal entity or their legal company, we search through trademark records, uh, the WHOIS database for uh, internet domain name registrations. But sometimes companies are very good at masking all that stuff and you can't find all of it. So sometimes you can match it, sometimes you can't. Uh, and then, you know, uh, if they, like if it's your, if it's a product that's probably being sold by a private labeler, it's usually easier to match it. Whereas if it's a product that's in like one of these giant brands or I don't know, some of the other ones, sometimes it's just more difficult to match. So as far as the easiest way to find a supplier, I mean, I'll, uh, I'll share my screen again to show you. Okay. I, I do still try a, uh, the ASIN search or the company search. And let me show you kind of like how I do it. All right. So, you know, I haven't, uh, I, I just found this with you guys. So I haven't tried this ahead of time or anything, but normally what I would do is I would go in here and I would try to find whatever harness was like rated the best. So, you know, probably like this one or this one. So what I can do is I can, I'll open both of these and I'll show you how I would go about trying to find the factory for these. So obviously one way that we just spoke about is just through the ASIN search, right? So just cause that's very quick and easy. I usually start with that. Like I said, it usually for me only works about one out of three times. So I'll check these, um, coat, sweater, uh, I don't know what a rayon suit is. That could be it though. And then I see some other, uh, some other types of shirts. So I think this actually is probably the brand that owns, oh, sorry. I think this is the brand that owns, uh, excuse me, the company <laughs> that owns this brand. However, for whatever reason, oh, actually, let me check the next one real quick. They must also do a lot of coats. 
And they need to know that also the, the, the sellers are most of the time also uh, factories from China. So can be that they are like... Uh, yeah, that's exactly right. In this case, it's factory. Yep. So it's... Uh, so I wasn't able to find that one. So let me try with this one real quick. And then if neither of these show up, then I'll show you how I do this next. Uh, this could be it, but it's hard to know for sure, right? So, okay, so I wasn't able to find it through that. So then normally the next thing I do is I'll try to just research this company a little bit more. All right, so uh, I usually just do like a Google search. And what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to find out the, um, the, the name of their company or legal entity, which I think I've found it before, but I'm just going to do a little more searching. Uh, So I'll search for them. This one's not really pulling up any results, right? So like this one was like, they, they were able to hide themselves pretty well. Um, but I could try this other one. You know, this one's obviously Chinese. Actually, most of the Chinese sellers do the best job at hiding them. Typically <laughs> because it's, uh, I don't know if that's usually on purpose, but it seems like the Chinese companies are actually usually pretty hard to find where the American ones the American ones I'd say I can usually find, but the Chinese ones are a little bit harder. So I'm actually gonna uh, try to find someone else. But, so essentially I would just do some Google searching. I would look around to see if I was able to find them. If I wasn't able to find who makes their exact factory, the next thing that I then do would, do, would be just to take the keyword and just type it into search by product. And then I can start to see you know, climbing harness, climbing harness, climbing harness. The reason that I, looks like a lot of climbing harnesses. I should do just this. The reason that I like to do this, or the reason that I like to find my factories this way instead of like through Alibaba is because then what I can do is I can take like, okay, so this company obviously makes a climbing harness for black diamond equipment. Then I can see what brands Black Diamond Equipment have. All right, so I can then take this and I can do Black Diamond Equipment Climbing Harness. And I can see what kind of reviews they get, right? So this is like, uh, so these are pretty good reviews, right? 4.6 out of five. It's a good product. Right, so now I know these are high quality products and I also know who their factory is now, right? So I know that this is their factory um, and yeah, that, so like this way I know that this is probably a pretty high quality factory and I can also see who else they make, right. To check someone else. Um, Sims. Oh, actually for that one, I don't, I think it said. I guess this one was backpacks, but anyway, I can see what kind of reviews their backpacks get. Mm, their backpacks don't have many reviews, right? They only have one or two reviews, so it's not really a great gauge. Um, but, you know, from the last one, I can tell that, where was it? That they make a pretty high quality climbing harness because these are getting good reviews. And, the reason that I like using reviews for gauging the quality of a factory is because like these are real customers that rated these products. You know, like when a company or when a factory sends you a sample, they're probably going to put a little extra love into it, make sure it works really well and everything. But like to actually make a whole bunch of products and get reviews from customers, that's the best way to gauge quality. Yeah. Um, I wanted to ask you also, uh, is it any way to see is the... Uh these factories from, uh, from your base, uh, is there a trading company anywhere or uh, how, how can they see, is it a factory or a trading company? Uh, it's because on, on uh, Alibaba, we can, we can manage, we can see who is the trading, who is the manufacturer, how is uh, a situation for with, uh, Ali, with uh, 
with your um, software? Yeah, good question. You know, our data comes from the U.S. government import records, so the so it's a little bit more difficult to do so. But I'll show you how I do it. So one way that I do it is I see what kind of products they've been importing. If they've import mostly the same type of products, then it's probably a factory, right? It's like climbing harness, backpack. It makes sense. Like someone who makes climbing harnesses would also make backpacks. They seem like kind of the same style of products, right? Mm-hmm. Climbing harness, backpack, climbing harness, backpack. So this, this seems to me like a factory and I could probably find their website. Let's see, this is their website. It's all in Vietnamese, but I could translate it. Oh, here's the English version. And then from this, I can usually get a pretty good idea of whether or not they are a, a training company or a factory. But really my favorite way to gauge it is just to see what types of products they're making. So since they're making all backpacks and climbing harnesses, like that makes sense. But let me try to find one that doesn't. Like that one makes sense. Uh, that one kind of makes sense. Sometimes you'll look at their import records. Like this one, that one still kind of makes sense. If you look at their import records and you see that they do like climbing harnesses, but then also uh, iPhone cases, and then also <laughs> like something else. Actually, here's a good example. You know, they have one rock climbing harness and then they have a whole bunch of just other random stuff. So this is either a trading can be. Yeah, this is either a trading company or maybe just someone who imports goods for people. Yeah. So that's how you can kind of tell the difference. Uh, also about the quality of the factory, you can also see maybe by these uh, total shipments, maybe there's. Uh... Yeah. The total shipments is a good indicator of just how long they've been in business how many shipments they do each month. When you see little gaps like this, it doesn't necessarily mean that they didn't ship anything. Sometimes what happens is they just have different spellings on the government records. So they're listed as kind of like two different companies. What you can do is you can try to find, you can sometimes search for them to see if there's a, You get the idea. You can sometimes see if there's other, they just have other misspellings or whatever else in the database. Okay. Okay. I have one more question about the uh, uh, keywords. Yeah. Because okay. our, uh, I will just relate this. Uh, one of the followers asked about, uh, he is trying to download the uh, uh, keywords from uh, one of the, his top competitors, but the data doesn't show the keywords. What is happening? It's sometimes it's happening like this yeah. because I, I think that you know, it needs a time. It's so many new products is coming in Amazon, so you cannot get all the data from them even uh, even for keywords, especially if they are new. So what happens is the keyword scout it only shows you the keywords that the competitor ranks on the first. Um, the first five or 10 pages for, okay? So it doesn't show all the keywords that they're indexed for, it's only the ones that they're ranked on the first uh, five, five pages or 10 pages, I kind of forget now. But I'll also say, um, I, it's embarrassing to admit, but we also did just have a bug on this, like uh, in the past couple of weeks, I'm pretty sure it's been fixed now, but there was just a little bug in our thing that some of them weren't showing up even though they were ranking for some of this. So, I think it's fixed now uh, for the for whoever's uh, whoever asked that. But uh, if not, we we know about it. And it should be fixed any day now. I know that you have a great support. I always say to my students, you know, I I test a lot of uh, softwares, all of them, all of them, <laughs> the the top one, you know, and I have always great support from your team. That is really 
uh, helpful. I, I always say you don't look at the price, don't look at anything else. See when you need the help, who is there to support you, you know, that is more important mm. than anything else. Uh, the same you need to be to your uh, customers on Amazon. You know, if yeah. they ask a question, yeah, it's the same. It's just uh, how you feel when someone asks to you, you do the same to your customers and you have, mm. a, you have a, a successful business, you know. I'm really happy to hear that. <laughs> of course. So, Greg, thank you for this uh, little lesson, you know, uh, more advanced one I'm doing also for uh, for my uh, students and I also will be also here on a, and the next tutorials here on my YouTube channel. So if I have any question, I will always uh, ask you and you and, and your team members. But uh, I hope to see, uh, to see you here in Belgrade because uh, as we spoke about, uh, if we organize one conference here or meet up, I would like you to come here to be our guest, you know, to be as a top person in Amazon business. Uh, it's my opinion, someone mm -hmm. who has so big uh, knowledge about everything. So you deserve to be here. Awesome. I would love to come and thank you very much for having me on. I've enjoyed it. Thank you very much. Say hello to your wife and enjoy your working day, you know. All so right. Say hello also to, to Joseph. All right. Will do. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. -bye. Bye.